Google and Yahoo just announced that they need new sender requirements for all email marketing communication. Now, I know that sounds very, very confusing, and you're probably wondering how to even set this up. So in today's video, I'll be showing you exactly step by step, exactly what everything means, what requirements you have to make, and how to do it step by step in Klaviyo. With that said, I'm Nikita from aspectagency.com, and let's jump right into the video. So you've probably seen this article here where Google and Yahoo have new sender requirements on how to prepare without interrupting your BFCM plans. So this was uh, this was released in October 27th, but they did recently drop an article on the things that you actually need to work on. So this one is right here, how to meet Google and Yahoo's email sender requirements in 2024. So there's about six steps that you need to take care of. Honestly, four of those are very, very easy to follow. Two of them are a little bit complicated, but I'll be walking you through step-by-step step on how to implement this. So first off, remove Gmail from your friendly from address. So what this means is just stop using your at Gmail or at Yahoo accounts to send out emails or send out campaigns or automations or flows. You need to have an actual business domain to be able to send out communication to your customers or to people that have submitted their information on your website. So this one is a very easy you know, follow. So next up is setting up a branded sending domain. And this takes a little bit of effort and a little bit of uh, information on how to do this. And I'll be showing you exactly how to do this later in the video, but just make sure you have your Klaviyo account pulled up and make sure that you have your hosting provider pulled up or the place where you got your email do uh, domain from or just your normal website domain. This could be Namecheap, uh, Google Domains, GoDaddy, whatever it is, just have that pulled off to the side. Uh, next up is set up your DMARC policy. This one is, again, looks very, very complicated, but I'll be showing you exactly how to set this up and how to do this. Again, just make sure you have your um, hosting provider pulled up. Align your from address with your brand domain. So this one's easy. So for example, if you're sending out emails from you know, nike.com or let's say hello at nike.com, make sure that all communication from your Klaviyo account are from that at nike.com uh, email. Uh, next up is make it easy to unsubscribe. So Klaviyo is automatically putting in this one click unsubscribe button into all future communications that you're gonna be sending out. At the same time, you wanna make sure that all email templates that you're using and all email campaigns, automations, flows, etc., have a footer at the bottom that say, hey, change your communication preferences or change uh, or unsubscribe from our list entirely. You will need to make sure that is all within all of your email templates. It's very easy to do um, and you know it'll make sure that you're following the new sender requirements. And then keep spam complaints low. So you wanna make sure that your spam complaint rate is below half a percent. So basically, you know, no one is complaining that they're getting spam emails. And if you do have a high spam complaint rate, make sure that you're only sending out to an engaged audience, ideally engaged within your email marketing platform. I'd say within 60 to 90 days is a good measure or at least something good to start with. If it's still very, very high, reduce that window to in the last 15 to 45 days um, and then expand it as you send out more campaigns throughout time. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into the nitty gritty, which is the branded sending domain and your DMARC policy. So I have here namecheap.com, which is where all of my domains are set up. And so this is a dummy testing account that we use for all of our email you know, audits and testing out any new strategies. So this would be a perfect case. So you wanna go ahead and go to the bottom, go to settings, go to email, and then go to domains. So this is where you set up your sending domain and it's pretty straightforward. So let me go ahead and split off these windows and show you exactly what needs to be done. So we have Namecheap on one side and we have Klaviyo on another side. The domain that we're gonna be testing through is going to be um, my first name and first initial. It's nikitav.com and one thing that I would recommend doing, and I'll leave a link down in the description, is using Google Admin Toolbox. And what this does is, it shows you exactly what records are set up and what records aren't. This domain, again, 
I'm not using at all. I'm not sending this domain just redirects back to aspect. So I'm not even worried about any of these records because nothing's being sent from it. It's purely for showing you how to set this up. But you can see here, DMARC isn't set up, DKIM isn't set up. All these different things aren't set up. That's to be expected. But what we're looking for is DMARC to not be set up. So what you can do is just plug in your domain, click run checks, and you can see here that DMARC is not set up. At the end of this, you'll see that it's going to be set up. So let's go back to Klaviyo. Let's go back to email. Let's go to domains, set up a sending domain, and the website is gonna be nikitav.com. We're gonna use the sending subdomain to be send dot nikitav.com and we want to make sure that this is dynamic routing for the best possible deliverability click next select your dns provider it is namecheap so it's going to tell you what you need to do so sign into your account select domains select manage and then go to the advanced dns tab which we are already at we're going to go next and then you're going to have to copy these values over into your dns records so this is very, very easy, and what you can, what you need to do, at least in Namecheap, um, all I have to do is click New Record, uh, select NS Record. I'm just gonna do this a lot, so that way I can just easily copy. So the host is gonna be always send. So we're gonna do send, 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 send. Um, and then this is just gonna be at. Sometimes in different hosting providers, this is either a blank or an at, so it doesn't really uh, matter. But um, if it gives you an error, just leave it blank, um, or if it gives you an error, if it's blank, just put an at there. Um, then we're gonna go ahead and copy all these values, which is ns.clavio.com. And that's one, two, three, four. So I guess I don't need this fifth one. And then we're gonna copy this Clavio site verification. And then we're gonna go ahead and click save all changes, leave the TTL to automatic or whatever is the pre-saved um, pre setting there. Sometimes it's, it's a number called 3600, or sometimes it's automatic. It really depends on the hosting provider. So this is now updated and we're gonna go ahead and click verify records. And I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and come back in about 10 to 20 minutes because that's usually when, how long it takes to propagate these name servers. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so I didn't have to wait 10 to 20 minutes. Actually, you had to wait like two minutes. But um, when you click verify records and all of these green checkboxes come up, that means you set up everything correctly. So good job. And then there is a small checkbox that you have to check here saying, I understand that I may need to limit emails engaged to engage recipients for two to four weeks. Now what that specifically means is that if you are a brand new email account that you just started like two weeks ago, you bought the domain three weeks ago and you haven't sent anything, you have to be very, very careful because this is where you have to kind of warm up your email account and you don't want to send out you know, 30,000 emails right away because 90% of the time, those emails are gonna just go straight to spam because you don't have any domain reputation, you haven't sent any emails before, and you're starting off the gate with sending so many emails that to Google, to Klaviyo, to Yahoo, to everybody in the email system thinking that you're just gonna be spamming people because a lot of people just buy these domains, rip through them, um, sending out spam and, you know, it just doesn't work out. So you wanna make sure that you ramp up. If you're already a Klaviyo customer and you've been sending out emails for you know, a year, a few months already, and you, you know, you're, you're in a flow of constantly sending out emails, then you're good to go with that switchover. You don't have to limit your, your size pool. But this Klaviyo article also highlights that, look, for existing Klaviyo customers that are just moving to this dedicated sending domain, you don't have to warm up your infrastructures again as long as your domain has been registered in the least in the last 30 days and you've used this domain to send out emails already in the past um, to new Klaviyo customers i would it, again it recommends to use only high engagement data so people that have already opened people that have already clicked etc and have already been using Klaviyo's integration to sync open and click events so that's one thing you need to be look at, looking out for so we're going to go ahead and click ok we're gonna go ahead and click activate. And look at that, we got our sending domain done. So pretty much the only hard part left is setting up your DMARC policy. Now DMARC is 
Again, it's a little bit complicated, and there's a Google Workspace article that I'm gonna go ahead and include down in the description that goes over everything here. But let me go ahead and reduce the size of this so we can read. But basically, it's the it's an email verification record that helps, you know, if your SPF go um, are faulty, if your DKIM is faulty, your DMARC record is the one that's like the last stand that just verifies your email again. It's just another redundancy that's set up in the email record system to help Google understand like, okay, if we can't load up your SPF, if we can't load up your DKIM, okay, if your DMARC is there and it it's verified, then you're good to go. So. With DMARC values, it's completely different. Um, you need to have the V and P tags. Everything else here at the bottom is completely optional. You don't have to really worry about it. The only ones that I'd worry about is if you have a high sending list to set up a PCT uh, record to slowly ramp up your domain implementation or your DMARC implementation. Um, and then the RUA is just a redirect mail to um, record basically saying that, hey, if you wanna get insights on your DMARC records, uh, we will mail your report um, every day or every how often you want it through this email. So that's where you would add in this mail to uh, DMARC record. Um, here you'd put in like an email for reports at your domain.com. So we're only worrying about the VNP tags and 99% of the time, you just need V equals DMARC one, P equals reject, or no wait, <laughs> P equals uh, none. Uh, so so yeah, V equals DMARC one and then P equals none, mainly to say that like, okay, uh, this P tag basically in, um, means that the mail servers, um, do they have to pass authentication or they don't have to pass authentication? Uh, none doesn't really matter. Quarantine is just, it has to come from a direct domain um, and to automatically send emails to spam and reject just again th those emails just need to bounce so we're looking at none here and let's go ahead and set that up so here we are back in our domains we're going to go ahead and click add a new record we're going to add a text record and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the record name is dmark just dmark um, sometimes you need to put in dmark dot yourdomain.com or .co, whatever it is. Um, and then the value is very simple. It's just V equals D mark one semicolon P equals none semicolon. So let's add in that semicolon and let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go ahead and wait a minute and we're gonna check our records here. Okay, cool. So I had to pause for a few minutes to make sure that all the records are set up. But you can now see here, I ran the check for my own domain and we have DMARC policies set up correctly. So basically we are now good to go and you just need to make sure that you're only sending out from that domain um, in the future. Have your footer contain unsubscribe links and um, don't send from Gmail and Yahoo accounts and keep your spam comp complaint rate low. With that said, Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned a lot and hopefully you'll have better deliverability in the new year. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.